Thanks for connecting on to the Wednesday edition of Logan's European Outlook. Hope everybody is well uh, today. This was the temperatures overnight last night. Minus 4.7 at Glasgow Airport last night. Minus uh, 7 at uh, Tullock Bridge or Fursit. We had the core of the coldest temperatures actually across the north of England last night. Southeastern Scotland. And uh, as um, has been the case in recent nights, the predicted colder than norm, uh, the cold temperatures of the far north of Scotland did not materialise. In fact, we had temperatures barely above the freezing mark in some northern stations last night. And it was all because of breeze and cloud cover, as well as even some snow showers in the air as well. So the, the lightest winds, clear skies, uh, was focused across more of the north of England, southeastern Scotland uh, last night. This is the current temperatures as of recording. So, of course, we are seeing the milder conditions move from north um, or from south to north. We'll get there in the end. And you can see here that we've got 13 Celsius in the southwest of uh, the Irish Republic. We've got the uh, even temperatures as high as 6 Celsius at the uh, Inverness Dalcross, 5 at 10, as you can see here. Um, a relatively uniform temperature profile across the board, but it's a very, very messy picture out there. This is the current radar chart of weather online. And you can see um, the situation that we've got going. A shield of moisture encompassing a broad area of the British Isles, thanks to an area of low pressure moving in. Some very heavy, persistent rain. We could see mountain, uh, you know, totals of in excess of 100 millimetres, by the way, over the next several days as this moisture moves north with mild conditions and as you can see here off weather underground this is the uh, snow radar chart and uh, you've got snow really largely confined to the highest hills of northern england southern scotland and the highlands uh, we still have that moisture yet to reach the far north and uh, indeed aberdeenshire um, that will arrive probably into the the overnight period tonight so we, uh, I want to look at, actually, at the, um, this is the temperature profile so far, anomaly-wise, for the UK and, indeed, Europe. Um, so this is the 2-metre temperature anomaly over the continent, and we do have the cold continuing across the UK and Ireland, as you can see here. And like I said, I kind of hinted a little bit yesterday in, in, in the video, maybe a little bit nervous about the, um, the amount of warmth left in north, the persistency of that warmth and how is that going to flip the month around from being cold in average to above average because this time of the year very very difficult sometimes to call a colder than average month based on strength of the sun uh, and whatnot um, it's very very easy sometimes to chip away um, at that uh, very cold anomaly but I do have a little bit of confidence that we will hold on to that cold and average through the rest of the month based on what I'm seeing. Now, this is an interesting tweet by Dr. Simon Lee, and he talks about how the Wesley winds and a positive NAM have returned to the 10 millibar level. So way up at the very top of the stratosphere, the winds have reverted back westerly. We've got a little bit of recovery in the polar vortex. But be aware, uh, as he goes on to say, that the long, lower stratospheric time scale, this persistence, um, it, you know, is why the SSWs provide such a long-term potential predictive information. So, in other words, the drip effect from that major stratospheric warming that took place on the sixteenth of February, trickling down through the column, has long-term effects, and this is something I had highlighted. Um, you know, for the last few weeks as well, the long term effects of this could linger even into the month of April. So, we do see a recovery in the temperature anomaly here over the next several days. We are pulling in a lot of warm air from the southwest that is going to chip away at that cold anomaly over the UK. But there is reason to believe, and uh, I've alluded to this actually in some of the longer range models. Uh, about the kind of repetitive nature of high latitude block and that Greenland block or even a Scandinavian block trying to re-establish after it kind of pulls away, we lose that effect. Um, sometimes the lingering effects of this paint drip, so to speak, effect through the column can linger on and it looks as if the modeling, uh, you know, the GFS 
is seeing that we lose some of the high latitude block. And as you can see here, that is what we're seeing at the moment. But then we see the, the kind of ready orange colors uh, coming back into play, uh, filtering all the way down to 1,000 millibars here, which is pretty much down close to the surface. So it, it's indicating the model is sniffing out the return of a blocky type pattern. And this is the long-term drip effect of that sudden stratospheric warming. If you look at the, the North Atlantic Oscillation, you can see here where we've recovered back to neutral once again, but there is a little bit of a dip goes back to neutral and then it goes back negative once again albeit very subtle but if you look at the um the ecmwf weeklies here you can see in a sense what's going on this is the upcoming seven day period now we've got a lot more lower pressure in play and with lower pressure up closer to iceland we in the uk and ireland stay on the warmer side of the jet stream relatively speaking but you notice here that as we play through this loop here, we do start to pull a little bit of that block back closer to Iceland. And, and you're, what essentially you're doing is you're forcing the jet stream, the storm track, a little bit further south once again. And, and that cold air is never overly far away from the north of the, the British Isles here. And uh, so... You know, that is quite interesting to see. So, that, of course, this is the weeklies off the ECMWF. This is the 500 millibar potential anomaly here. And you can see here in the 7 to 10 day, if we we'll go back to the 7 to 14, should I say, sorry. You can see here that we still have that block across the north of North America and Greenland here. And as we persist through the period here, we see a little bit of that block and trying to transfer a little bit further east once again. And like I say, that essentially is forcing the storm track a little bit further south. So therefore, we're liable to tap into colder air masses a little bit more easily. Have the negative a little bit further north. You're, you know, tend to tap warmer air from the south. So just something to take into consideration here, I think, that although we've got this warm surge coming at the moment, there is a lot of reason to believe that the cold tries to come back in once again towards the, the end of the month. And you can see that here. If we look at the European view, let's have a look at the uh, temperature anomalies here at the surface here. So this is the upcoming seven-day period. This is Europe. And you can see here that according to the, the ECMWF, let's get back to the right appropriate chart. Look at Iceland. That just amazes me, actually, how cold Iceland is is at the moment it has been cold this is of course the month of march so far very very cold compared to normal but you notice here this is the upcoming seven day period of a uh, uh, i'd be curious to see how this compares to a uh, historical perspective actually across iceland for the month of march but anyway this is the, the upcoming seven day period cold and normal across the highlands of scotland but, uh, above average the, the rest of the uk as you can see here and a good part of western and central europe a cold and average across the north of Scandinavia. But if we get to play through this loop, what you see is we see on the 7 to 14 day, and this is exactly what I'm talking about, the colder than average pushes back south once again. And this is a direct uh, response to what we're seeing with regards to the, the, the NAM here uh, index. So the Northern Angular Mode Index showing that major sudden stratospheric warming at the very top of the stratosphere trickling down takes a good couple of weeks then when we do see the effects it, it hits hard initially as we're seeing right here uh, right at the very beginning of the month we had the strongest high latitude blocking since we've seen back in december then we can kind of pull out of that but then it's this drip effect that kind of recurrence of high latitude blocking tries to kind of linger on and that is exactly what we're seeing both at the 500 millibar potential anomaly uh, position and the surface temperature anomaly chart representing below average and we'll continue to play through the ecmwf weeklies you can see here that the cold lingers into the early portion of april here and that is the month of april and it is looking quite cool compared to average. Not necessarily brutally cold, but certainly this is the potential implications of that lag effect seen on the uh, major sudden stratospheric warming. So the NAO, certainly according to the GFS, 
seems to kind of bob up and down between neutral and negative. And uh, I think the coal will probably try to linger on, I think, as we go forward. So a little bit of kind of medium range stuff today. Temperature here at the house is sitting on 4.6 Celsius with the bulk of the moisture still to the south of the house here. But uh, yeah, we're going to have uh, a few days here where it's going to be fairly wet, fairly windy. We'll look in more detail at rain totals and whatnot probably in tomorrow's video. Um, but yeah, I think on the whole, we've got a predominantly milder than average. Let's have a very quick look, in fact. And just bear with me a second. We'll have a wee quick look at what's uh, taking place in terms of the the next few days. In fact, we'll go to the weather charts and let's play through the latest run of the ECMWF. Since we've been looking at the weeklies, we might as well look at the uh, charts. So just bear with me. Um, since I've got a little bit of time on my hand. So area of low pressure, of course, is to the west of the UK. Then the shield of moisture moves in. Of course, we're tapping a warmer source of air mass from near the Azores, that's pulling north. So uh, precipitation becoming more and more of rain as the warmer air lifts north. That area of low pressure kind of lingers, hangs back to the west of the UK and Ireland here through the latter half of this week. Uh, through the course of the weekend, that area of low pressure seems to be pretty close to the UK, so we're going to continue with fairly unsettled conditions, windy at times, especially up towards the north, but not uh, primarily. We're going to have off and on rain charge uh, through the course of the Saturday Sunday period. Then we've got another area of low pressure that moves in with a shield of moisture. This is what I'm talking about in the 7 to 14, or even earlier than that. Area of low pressure moves to the east. We'll open up a little bit more colder air. We may increase the chance of seeing hill snow once again. And notice here the ECMWF is starting to shift that storm track a little bit further south in response to what I was talking about uh, at the uh, you know just a, a second or two ago. The areas of low pressure get forced south with the jet stream. So yeah, we're not out of the woods yet. Though. We're not going to just all of a sudden enter spring. Gone is winter completely. You can get your jackets away, get the shorts and shades on. It's not going to be a case of that. And I think we're going to even have a lingering effect even during the month of April. So I think I've rambled on long enough uh, today. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. Please like, please share with your friends and family. Stay tuned. Lots of things to talk about in the coming days and weeks. Uh, it looks as if El Nino is going to be coming on. We're going to be talking about the effects that may have on the upcoming summer season. Are we going to have another blowtorch? Are we going to have another arrival of 1976? Or is it going to be a summer more of a washout nature like 2007 or 2012? We'll uh, wait and see what happens anyway. But stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Hopefully see you again tomorrow with more.